So the 2017 Summer Nindies Direct thing just wrapped up and I thought it was pretty good. A metric crap ton of people were thinking we were going to get Smash 5 or Mother 3. Why? I have no earthly idea. This was a Nindies Direct. If you look at it from the perspective of, hey, maybe they can announce some cool new indie games, I think that they definitely did that. My personal favorites have got to be the Shovel Knight trailer and probably the SteamWorld Dig 2 trailer, because that first game and Heist were both phenomenal. But it got me thinking, hey, what other indies are coming to the Switch? I kind of forget most of the games from the first Nindies Direct, so I went ahead and rewatched that. After watching that and thinking about it for a bit, it is clear that there are a ton of forgotten Switch games that are still, like, confirmed to be- like, they haven't been cancelled, they've just been forgotten. So I compiled seven or so of them, and I'm gonna kinda, like, tell you about them and give you my thoughts on why people don't give a crap anymore about these games. This is kind of a unstructured video, I'm just kinda talking about the games, no script or anything like that, so yeah. Hey guys, I'm Thomas from the Switch Stop, and here are my seven most forgotten Switch games. Alright, so as I do this with all my countdowns, but just don't hate on me if you disagree with this list. Obviously, with a title like Forgotten Switch Games, there's bound to be hate towards this. Obviously, if I tell you this, you're going to be like, hey, wait, no, I knew most of those titles were still coming to the Switch. And I'm going to be like, okay, but if I asked you to name a bunch of Switch titles, would these be some of the first you named? No, probably not. Anyway, even if they would be, I, I don't care. Most of the general public, in my opinion, has forgotten them, so that's why I'm putting them on this list. Okay, so without out of the way, the number 7th pick is... The Escapists 2. This game came out in August of this year, 2017, and it was pretty well received. Everyone really liked the improvements made over The Escapists 1, and overall it was a really great game that a lot of people enjoyed. This game is also coming to the Switch, but when, we still don't know. Team 17, the developers, have said that it'll come later in this year, 2017, but beyond that we really don't know anything. Due to the fact that this game has already been on basically every other console, PC, Xbox One, PS4, no one's really thinking about getting it for the Switch. Now I am, because obviously portability, but I don't think many other people are. Number 6 on this list is Steep. So Steep is actually a game I didn't even know about until the Nintendo Switch January event press conference thing. It's a game developed by Ubisoft, it's like an open world ski, action, sports, extreme type game. Um, it came out to pretty good acclaim, like, people were super hyped but then Ubisoft just Ubisoft it and announced a bunch of DLC and stuff and that kinda killed the game. I mean it, it looks pretty fun, uh, to be honest it kinda gives off a Wii Ski vibe. If any of you uh, OGs know what Wii Ski is, that was from obviously the Wii. It was it used the Wii Fit Scale thing, and it was also open world, and it used like me like characters. I don't think it was actual me's, but it used characters like that, and it was a pretty awesome game. So I was pretty looking forward to this game coming to the Switch, but then everyone forgot about it. Everyone forgot about it so much that Ubisoft had to come out and like publicly say, hey yeah, this game is, is still coming out this year, so yeah, remember, but no one really remembered. Um, I'm still looking forward to it, I might pick it up, I don't know, but yeah, I, a bunch of people have forgotten about it already. Okay, the number five pick on this list is actually the game that kind of inspired me to make this list. I saw it while I was re-watching the first Nindies Direct, it was Flipping Death. So I thought this game was really creative, it looked like one of the- it was definitely one of the best indies from that direct. I was really looking forward to pick, picking it up and playing it for the first time, but then it kind of fell off the face of the earth for no reason. Well, okay, scratch that. There were a couple of big reasons I'll get to in a minute. So the basic premise of this game is it's a 2D platformer, I think it's a platformer, I have I don't know if it's a platformer RPG, but it's 2D, and you can like do this thing where you like flip it into the reverse perspective, whatever. 
So, yeah, the reason, in my opinion, that this game actually kind of fell off is because at E3 2017, the new Yoshi game was announced, and it's the exact same thing. You, It, it has the same flipping mechanic, so it, like, does the wow 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 thing where it, like, flips perspectives, and it also has the same kind of, like, paper vibe to it. Obviously, the Yoshi game isn't, isn't like, gonna have dialogue like Flipping Death is, and, like, there, there's trade-offs to each game, but obviously Yoshi, way bigger franchise than just a little indie game. Um, I, more people are definitely going to pick up Yoshi, so that's why, in my opinion, people kind of stopped talking about it. Also, the fact that literally no news came out after the uh, official Nindy Direct thing. Alright, so uh, my next pick is Ukulele, that Kickstarter game. So Playtonic was founded by a bunch of former Rare members and like workers on Banjo-Kazooie and those games, so we, everyone thought Ukulele was going to be good, like one of the better Kickstarter games, like up there with Shovel Knight, but then it got just, it got crapped on. It was riddled with frame rate issues, uh, it was criticized for not having the same kind of creative inventiveness that really made Banjo-Kazooie Banjo-Kazooie, if that makes any sense. So that game was kind of just not as good as everyone thought it would be. It kind of flopped. That's why, in my opinion, no one's really excited for the Switch version now because, I mean, no one really liked the other versions. The only real reason I'm kind of even halfway excited for this one is because maybe by the time it comes out, Platonic will have gotten their shit together and the game will not be riddled with frame rate problems, but obviously that doesn't fix the lack of creativity. Another big reason why this game is no longer cared about is because there's another small competitor, uh, maybe you've heard of it, it's called Mario Frickin' Odyssey. Yeah, Mario Odyssey is looking to be one of, if not the have to get game for the Switch this year. I mean, I'm sorry Splatoon 2 Breath of the Wild, but in my opinion, Odyssey just looks outstanding. It's taking 3D Mario back to its roots, uh, it looks incredible. So yeah, I mean, why would you get a mediocre $40 uh, kickstarted budget title kinda that's a 3D platformer that was riddled with frame rate issues and got mediocre reception when you can get kind of the epitome of 3D platforming, Mar another Mario 3D platformer that is, it, it, like, can we just already say that this game is gonna be a huge success? There is literally a point zero 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 one percent chance that this game gets like less than a 9 out of 10. So yeah, that's why I think Ukulele for the Nintendo Switch is pretty much forgotten. Yeah, this is a weird one. Monopoly for the Switch is coming out. <laughs> that's pretty much all we know about it. Um, it seems to be a port of the mobile version if I'm correct. I mean, obviously I'm not a Monopoly video game fanatic. I don't even think that's a thing. I don't think anyone's a Monopoly video game fanatic. but. Um, I, I, it looks like the mobile one I've seen on my app store from time to time. Uh, the literally only reason I'm putting this game on the list is because I'm trying to raise awareness for it because of a kind of long and contrived reason that I'll explain right now. So, I'm pretty pissed we don't have a Mario Party game. Um, as you can see, that was on my list of top 10 ports we need for Switch. I, I really want a Mario Party game on the Switch. Really bad. So anyway, um, I figured if we can get more people to buy Monopoly of all games, we can show Nintendo, hey, yeah, people want a, like, party board game for the Switch. That's not 1-2 Switch. So... Yeah, if we buy Monopoly, I, I guess somehow in my mind that means they might do a Mario Party game. I have no idea. Yeah, that's literally the only reason this is on the list. Just, I, I want a Mario Party game bad and this is the closest we're gonna get. And I don't count 1-2 Switch as a game. My second to last pick on this list is NBA 2K18. And yeah, this is kind of a weird one. So, and as you probably know, NBA 2K18 is actually getting some decent, like, press coverage, as all the 2K games do. People are excited for this one, and I can't blame them. I mean, the, all the blockbuster trades in the NBA will make the new rosters fun to play with, and it actually looks pretty good. However, the Switch version is not really 
anywhere to be found. I mean, obviously the Switch logo shows up at the end of all the trailers, and the Switch uses 2K in its, like, promotional material, but the actual game is literally nowhere to be found. All the Game Stops I go to, the Targets, the Toys R Uses, they have, like, these little pre-order cards for where you, you, like, get a download code and it downloads the game on, like, release date. But it doesn't have that for the Nintendo Switch version of... Uh, 2K. It only has it for the PS4 and Xbox One versions. Also, when you try to order the game off of Amazon, literally you can't. There is no Amazon listing for this, which is absurd in my opinion. So yeah, that's why I think most people who are going to play 2K um, have forgotten about the Switch version. Okay, so the final pick is guaranteed to actually get, like, a bunch of people mad, but in my opinion, it is really a forgotten Switch game, and that is the new Fire Emblem Switch. Now, yeah, I am not talking about Fire Emblem Warriors. That game is, like, everyone's talking about it right now. I'm only talking about the core RPG Fire Emblem game that is coming to the Switch. Now, I guarantee you that some people out there watching this were like, Oh yeah, we are getting a Fire Emblem for Switch. This was announced kind of nonchalantly in the Fire Emblem Direct where Heroes Shadows of Valencia and more details on Warriors were kind of announced like I think it was in February with the spotlight for the Switch Fire Emblems being currently on Warriors. No one's really talking about Fire Emblem Switch. Obviously, there are the hardcore Fire Emblem fans who are like already theorizing on what it could be, taking every so possible source of information and theorizing like what this game could be. Is it going to be a remake in the style of Shadows of Valencia? Or is it going to be its own experience, which is probably the likely matter? So they're probably like, what the hell? No one's forgotten about this game. But yeah, a ton of people have forgotten about this game. Like, I'm sorry, but a bunch of people have. So yeah, this was kind of a impromptu video. I literally thought of this idea right after watching the Nindies Direct. Um, if you guys think that this was a good video, please let me know. Uh, it's probably just gonna have some gameplay for you guys to look at because I don't really know how I'm gonna like edit this visually. If there are any other Switch games I've forgotten, I see what I did there. Uh, then obviously leave them in the comments below. I'd love to know because, hey, more games for the Switch is never a bad thing, unless the games are garbage. Uh, yeah, I'm super pumped for all the new Switch games coming up. I know this doesn't really have anything to do with this video, but just talking about Mario Odyssey and the ukulele segment got me so much more pumped for the game. It's looking to be incredible. So if you liked the video, please be sure to actually like the video, because obviously Super Small Channel, uh, all that support helps. But without any further ado, uh, thanks for watching, and I guess we'll see you in the next bit. Bye. <laughs> Crap.